Hi, I'm George Hess, and I'd like a few minutes of your, of your time to talk about posters as an introduction to a set of lessons you're about to embark upon. A poster is a visual communications tool. It's a set of pictures, graphs, maps, and other visuals with just enough text wrapped around them to explain what's going on. One way to think of a poster is as an illustrated abstract. A good abstract is succinct, maybe 250 to 300 words, yet complete. Although unlabeled, an abstract will contain an introduction that describes the context of the problem. It'll contain some, uh, a statement of your objectives. It will contain a brief section of methods. Most of it will focus on the results. And then there will be some kind of conclusion that relates back to the context that you set out in your introduction. Now. Take that, add some maps, add some graphs, add some other visuals. Think about shortening it up even a little bit more by turning your narrative into bulleted sentence fragments, for example, and you're well on your way to having a good poster. Now, I see posters as having two major objectives. The first is to engage colleagues in conversation. The second is to get your main message across to as many people as possible as quickly as possible. Let's look at those two objectives in turn. First, engaging people in conversation. Unlike a straight-up oral presentation, poster sessions are very social and interactive events. There are lots of posters in the sessions often, and there are people milling about. A lot of times they'll have food and drink. It can get pretty loud, pretty exciting, and pretty interactive. What you're after is an interchange where you're talking to people about your work and ideas, and they're talking with you about theirs. This kind of cross-pollination can be really exciting and very productive. You could well come away from a poster session with new and different ways of thinking about your research question, and even new ways of continuing your work. A second goal is getting your main point across to as many people as possible as quickly as possible. I read a research paper some time ago in which the researchers looked at the average time spent reading a poster. I doubt you can imagine what it is, but it's about 90 seconds, and that's the average time. And as most of you probably know, there really is no such thing as the average viewer. So that average time is comprised of people who looked at the poster for 5 or 10 seconds, we'll call those the drive-by viewers and people who looked at it for maybe five to ten minutes, who really got into it. It would be really nice if you could get your message across, even to those drive-by viewers, and that's something that you should strive by, strive for. Excuse me. We'll explore how you do that in the lessons that you're about to see, but for now, one way to do that is what's called a results-oriented title. For example, the title of this poster is Southern Flounder Exhibit Temperature Dependent Sex Determination, which is a slightly awkward way of saying that water temperature determines the sex of southern flounder. Okay, one more thing before we end this lesson. Um, when you look at the uh, website on posters that Leon Legal and Catherine Tosney and I put together, you'll find a logo of sorts, focused graphic order. What we're trying to say there is that your poster should be focused on a single message, let the graphs and images tell the story, and reduce text as much as possible, and keep the sequence well-ordered and obvious. That's all I want to say for right now. I hope you enjoy the lessons, and thank you very much for your time. Good day.